Welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR Astrophotography Channel. Hey there, AstroVentures, welcome back. If you're new to this astrophotography channel, my name is George, and this is the astrophotography channel for DSLR and mirrorless camera bodies, combined with the lenses we already own and a simple star tracker like the Skyguider Pro or the Star Adventurer. In today's video, I wanted to tell you about a new piece of software, a rather inexpensive new piece of software, that I've started using. And what prompted me to find this software was because my bucket list summer target this year was to capture Ro Ofiuki. It is a beautifully colored nebulous area centered around the star Antares in the constellation Scorpius. But uh, here in the Northern Hemisphere where I'm located at, I have a number of challenges because one, uh, Scorpius, specifically the star Antares, does not come very high up in the sky. I also have to contend with the glow from the city of Salt Lake here in Utah and it really messes up the image when you try to process it and bring out those beautiful colors. So doing a bit of research, I came upon the program Astro Flat Pro. Now, uh, typing that into the search, AstroFlat Pro, here it is at the top, the actual website being prodigitalsoftware.com. And now, first off, the, the website itself is nothing spectacular, but the software is, so don't let the, the website steer you away. Um, here it's got some examples of, you know, before and after using the AstroFlat Pro. Works outstanding for taking care of the glow that um, tends to show up in our images we're processing them. It helps to correct for gradients that happen. Or in my case, Salt Lake City also kind of threw me a curve. The program at the time of recording this, 35, excuse me, $34.95, really inexpensive. Um, they offer a try it before you buy. And uh, let me tell you, it's worth it, and it, it couldn't been been you know easier to use. So once I purchased the software, I did the download that it offered, and on the download, what it does is it downloads this little installer. Simple double click, and it installs it right into my Photoshop. Couldn't have been any easier, and then. From there, let's jump over to Photoshop. And to locate it, it shows up under Filters, Pro Digital Software, and here it is, Astro Flat Pro. And so it couldn't be any easier to get it onto your computer. So let's take a look at Row, and you know, I'll show you what I was talking about and why I needed this program. Okay, so looking at it here in Photoshop, this is the initial photo that came out of Deep Sky Stacker. Obviously, you know, nothing much to look at. I went through the process of stretching each color channel, you know, until I had everything stacked and overlaying from each other. Eventually, uh, let's see here, we'll get rid of this. Eventually, this is the image that I came out with, but you can see I'm, I'm getting this glow. The, the bottom of the, the screen here, I'm picking this up from Salt Lake City. Over here on the right side, this is actually where the horizon is. This image is actually turned. Um, that's where the horizon is, and collectively it, it's just glowing, and it's washing out the beautiful colors within the nebula. Up here in the upper left corner, you can see the darker area that heads off into the sky that gets away from the horizon and all of the glow and everything. But it just wasn't working very well for me and it kept washing it out and I've repeatedly had this problem anytime that I try to, to photograph Ro. So uh, let's go ahead and you know go into 
using Astro Flat Pro. So here we go, filter, Pro Digital Software, Astro Flat Pro, I bring it up. The program is actually pretty quick. You're seeing this in real time as it runs. It's matching, you know, mapping the image luminance levels. And here it is, bam, it spits it out. And you can see right here, this already looks absolutely amazing. It's corrected all of that glow. You can see some of the colors starting to pop within row. And over here, there's not a lot to mess with. You've got smoothness, you've got edge cleanup, and you've got this dark noise reduction. Now, uh, by default, it's 202020. Um, most people uh, that have reviewed this software always tell me they just leave it 202020. But I started fooling around with the software, and I wanted to make some recommendations and show you some of the differences that I saw. Now, on the smoothness, I played with this and I found that 20 seemed to work very well. Uh, oh, one of the other things that I like in this is that you can see if you hover the mouse over it, it pops up information about exactly what that uh, specific adjusting slider is doing. Um, but anyway, I found that smoothness worked very well at 20. Edge cleanup, I really wasn't too worried about it. And the reason being is because with our uh, camera lenses that we use, I typically always trim off the, the edges of all of my photos anyway, because as we get further out in the optics of our long lenses, we get that distortion and stretching of stars. So I always trim it off anyway. And so I found leaving that at 20 works just fine. And then dark noise reduction, uh, this is the one that I started playing with, and I found some um, some variants to it that I specifically wanted to point out. So I would be in agreement with everybody else. Leave the top two at 2020. Now I'm going to hit cancel on this because I've actually already done the processing, and we're going to walk through this. So here we go. You can see on the right hand side, we're on the background copy. This was the initial, you know, where I started at, and then I ran the software, and this is using the 202020 of the, uh, you know, the default settings. Now, it worked great. I processed my image and I absolutely loved it, but here's the thing. I'm going to jump to some different settings, and as I said, this is the default setting, and what I want you to do is pay particular attention to the darkness in here, these dark clouds that are in here within the nebula. And I started playing with the different settings. Now, I did them um, in, in smaller increments, but hopefully so that it shows up on the video, I'm, I'm going to do a bigger jump. So between 20 for the, uh, the, the, the dark noise, the dark, the, excuse me, the, the dark space noise, I took it down to 10. Now watch here, right here, Watch the change that occurs. There you go. Did you see that? So we're on 10, back to 20, and then back to 10. So what I found was, is while 20 is great, it did take away some of the contrast. Now, let's jump all the way up to 60. And you can see how very flat this image got. And I actually tried it here, and you can see it at 10, 15, 20, 40, and 60. And what I found is, um, and this is how I'm going to use the software going forward. If I'm shooting and I have relatively clean data, low noise, I'm going to stick with uh, sending that that. Um, that slider for the, the deep space noise, uh, and I apologize if I'm saying the name of that slider wrong, um, but I'm going to change that bottom slider to a 10 because it retains more of the contrast, but there's no difference in getting rid of that glow that was in the image, whether I select 10 for that bottom slider or I select 60. It doesn't change, but I do keep the contrast. And the program, inexpensive, works amazing. Um, I want to tell you, it's a program that you absolutely want to get. It, it, it took away so many struggles for trying to correct for that glow. So 
I hope uh, you found this astral panel to be interesting. I hope you'll go out there, try out the, I, I think it's a 15 day free trial. Um, give it a, a try and then go back through some of your older images and start messing around with those too. I think you'll really be happy with it. And you know, honestly, I haven't seen a program easier to use in astrophotography than AstroFlat Pro. Okay, so if you like the video and the content you saw here, please consider ringing the bell, liking the video, sharing it, and subscribing. And we would also love to see you over at our Facebook group, Astro Venture DSLR. Until next time, I wish you clear skies and uneventful nights.